on a spring day in April 1994, Broadway witnessed a history-making event. After decades of thinking about mounting a Broadway show, Disney executives finally decided it was time to give it a try with Beauty and the Beast. Aware that few shows survive each season, Disney waited anxiously for the all-important first reviews. They would not be disappointed. No pain could be deeper. No life could be cheaper. No point anymore if I can't love her. No spirit. With a winner on their hands, Disney made another bold move. They took Beauty and the Beast on the road, and it is a phenomenal success. From L.A. to Boston, this touring company has been wowing audiences for more than three years now. Throughout the next five weeks, Hartford's famed Bushnell Memorial Hall will play host to this tale as old as time. It is the largest production we've ever had at the hall. 30 semis are full of things, full of stuff which you've seen a lot of. But it's the largest production, and to date, it's one of the most popular productions we've ever had at the hall. Programming like the Etna Broadway series uh, has a dual effect on the arts. It supports the arts and entertainment, but it brings people downtown. The rush is on for tickets. Good evening, everyone. I'm Susan Christensen. There's excitement in the air here at the Bushnell tonight. Theater goers of all ages are making their way into the hall for what promises to be an evening of magical enchantment that is undeniably Disney. While they settle in for this evening's performance, we'll go backstage for a peek at the incredible sights, sounds, and illusions that can only be found behind the magic of Disney's Beauty and the Beast. animated film Beauty and the Beast premiered in 1991, the New York Times called it the best Broadway musical comedy score of the year. Not surprising since the movie's score was written by the team of Alan Menken and Howard Ashman, who brought us the acclaimed off-Broadway hit musical Little Shop of Horrors. When asked to join the film-to-stage transition team, Menken jumped at the opportunity. This is something I've been, you know, this is one of my particular crusades as, as regards you know, the work we've been doing in animation, that the animated form was really, frankly, our form as when we were kids. And I, what I wanted to reawaken was a form that, that belonged to our generation to give it also, to share it with a new generation. Musically, when you come to see Beauty and the Beast, you're going to see very much the experience you had in the movie, but then there are six new songs. In the film, the Beast never sang. Now, Mencken had an opportunity to change that. We always imagined having a song for the Beast and never could get it into the animated picture. In the theater, there's an act break and the audience, you know, gets to stand up and then come back to it. And that's a great spot to really hit home the emotional peak of a show. And, and what's the cliffhanger? And he sings this song, If I Can't Love Her. Long ago I should have things I could have been, careless and unthinking, I moved onward. No pain could be deeper, no life could be cheaper, no point anymore if I can't love her. Would you have dinner with me tonight? One of the songs originally dinner. written by Mencken and Ashman for the film, but never used, has been restored to the theatrical version. As the enchanted objects observe Belle and the Beast falling in love, they dream of the spell being broken and of becoming human again. This supporting cast of enchanted household objects presented Disney with perhaps their greatest challenge. How would human actors become realistic candelabras, teapots, and clocks? 
Costume designer Ann Hold Ward designs the solution. What you're principally working with is the human body and the, the shapes and the silhouettes and how it looks on stage. Of course, in this instance, we also had the fact that they had to be an object and they had to look like that object, but they had to be able to function and move. The idea that the characters were turning into the objects rather than that they were fully the object when we began the show uh, became very important. Anne Hold Ward's elaborate designs provide the actors a means by which they can become their characters in a way totally believable to the audience. Erin Dilly plays the book-loving beauty, Belle, with a charming combination of sweetness, spice, intelligence, and compassion. The heart of the show, the romance, the love story is for anybody. Most of the people we get at the stage doors, we get a lot of little girls and bell gowns. But we also get couples and older people who have come to just be happy for two and a half hours. Oh, good morning, monsieur! Where are you off to? The bookshop. I just finished the most wonderful story about a beanstalk and an That's old... nice. She is different. She is a complete individual in this kind of almost cartooned village of people who are very much the same, kind of conformist. She's nothing like the rest of us, yet different from the rest of us. It's her. <laughs> I got it. I got it. I got it! The town bully is attracted to Belle's free spirit. Tony Lawson plays the egocentric Gaston. Erin Dilly is magnificent. She's not threatened by me. She, I'm just a big puppy dog. And she's always saying, oh, you know, oh, Gaston, and just pushing me away. There's no threat, even though. The rest of the people are all seem to be threatened because I am. I'm the bully. I've got this sense of humor that I've got to work into it. So all of a sudden, I'm adding a little bit of Little Abner and a little bit of Jethro from you know Beverly Hillbillies, and all these things are just coming together. And of course, people pick up on Elvis because I just you know I want to swagger. And yes, a little bit of all these sort of louder, bigger than life, uh, macho, well, male chauvinistic type men. You know, I mean, it's got to have a little bit of that too. And with his friend LeFou, little flu running around, that's his yes man. Everything he says is right. You know, he has people to say, you're right, you're right. <laughs> For me, I'm a cartoon buff, so I've always enjoyed taking especially cartoon-type characters, and bring them to the stage. She dreams. You meet her and she's a dreamer. She's been living in this little provincial town. She hasn't been in castles and princes haven't courted her and she hasn't had romances in her life. And suddenly, she does. She's in the middle of the biggest adventure of her life. This is your home now. You are free to go wherever you like, except the West Wing. Why? What's in the West Wing? It is forbidden! Belle's innocence is challenged by the dominating ferocity of the beast, played by Roger Beffler. Do you understand? <laughs> he starts out as a spoiled brat. Bastard! It's a struggle to find out what's human about him, because as the spell's gone on, he's just become more and more animal and then more to himself, not even having contact with the outside world. So I think Belle is the first person who comes in and kind of shakes him up. You didn't even let me say goodbye? What? I'll never see him again. What I loved about Belle, because I saw the show about a month ago, is she's this petite, small, beautiful, kind of innocent, booky, loves her dad kind of girl, but yet when she gets into the castle, Acting. she's like, excuse me, beast, but you know, you're rude, and I'm not going to do this, and if he thinks I'm coming upstairs, and... Oh, yeah. Where does she get the chutzpah to stand up to this big, hairy guy? It doesn't occur to her to treat him, um any differently than she would treat Gaston or any differently than she would treat her father. She treats him like a peer. I mean, she, when she tells him he's being rude, it, it, it's not condescending. It's, you should know that. 
to order people around. I mean, if I'm extending kindness to you, you can do the same to me. And one more thing. You will join me for dinner. That is not a request. I think that all of the, the objects, the people that I meet in the castle, are what allow Belle to finally open up to him. Lumiere makes her laugh. If you're stressed, it's fine dining, we suggest. Cogswell, the clock, is kind of a, a disciplinary figure. Cogswell's? I am surprised that you wear all your manners. We've got to get him out of here before the master finds out. Mrs. Potts makes her feel as though she there is a maternal figure near her. For you again. She's our guest. She's our guest. She's our guest. She's the mother figure for a lot of people, and she's, I think, the mother figure for the beast as well, um, as far as loving him, nurturing him, and disciplining him, you know, without being, you know, getting too much of his temper. <laughs> The Beast War was created especially for this show by Disney. When we return, some backstage wizards take us deeper behind the magic of Disney's Beauty and the Beast. Forgiving. They offer friendship. They communicate. They can injure, celebrate, appeal, and attract attention. Above all, they can create. Hitchcock furniture made one piece at a time. This is Imagine TV. Introducing the all-new 1999 Mercury Cougar. It's wild. Starting at 16595, well equipped. Are you game? Imagine yourself in a Mercury. The thrill. Hurry in to celebrate and save at Filene's based in spectacular 90th birthday week sale. Special shipments are arriving all week with savings up to 80% off department store prices on famous maker fashions for ladies and men. It's the basement's biggest birthday sale ever with savings throughout the whole store all week long and as many great buys as you can carry. Now, have I missed anything? Oh. You just can't beat the thrill. The basement's birthday sale going on now. Nationwide Warehouse. We simply sell brand name furniture for less. Period. No pretend sales, no gimmick finance promotions, and no hidden costs. We have over 60 living rooms to choose from. We have over 25 bedrooms to choose from. And we sell for less. Mattresses, pillow top mattresses, free layaway or same day delivery. Selling starts today. First come, first serve. Call 800 451 Nationwide Warehouse. oldest illusions is used to accomplish this effect of chip on the tea service hey there, and even we were not That's allowed to see behind yeah. this magic but the Disney Imagineers have developed entirely new effects for the show as well one of which is used in the very opening scene as punishment she transformed him into a hideous beast this is a glove that the Enchantress wears in the beginning of the show. Yes. And when you saw the show last night, you saw she threw a fireball. Right. You're probably wondering how she could hold a fireball in her hand and not hurt herself. This glove is made of Nomex, um, which is fireman's cloth. Mm. This is Nomex here. The Nomex uh, can, is fire retardant up to about 1,200 degrees. There's a, uh, what's called an electric match in the palm of her hand that it makes a small explosion and lights a ball. The ball ignites and then burns away and there's nothing left. This is Lumiere's right hand. Monsieur, 
the prosthetics are strapped onto his hands so that it looks like the wax candles are the only thing he has for hands. There's butane, which is the fuel for the flame, but the, uh, the spark is actually caused by a modified stun gun, uh, about an 80,000 volt stun gun. I know there's someone here, and I'll thank you to step out where I can see you. He flicks a valve right here, presses a button. So, all right. Thanks for warning me there, Eric. Oh, hey. That's right here at this desk. Um, one person is sitting here. One person really controls all the queuing of the show. And we're watching backstage. We're watching the conductor. We're watching... This is an infrared camera that we're actually watching what's going on in the blackouts. So we can even see at that time what's going on. And this is the front of house camera that's basically what the audience is seeing. And um, it also shows our, all of our lighting changes so we can keep an eye on the lighting. And it's basically throwing switches. Um, we have warned, we turn the switches on. Uh, the lights warn the technicians, various technicians throughout the theater that they've got a queue coming up. When we turn the light off, they take their cues. All the cues are written at each individual station so they know what to do when that light comes on. We'll say queue 46 on red. Red light goes on. Uh, they see the red light come on, they know they're standing by for a queue. When we turn the red light off, they hit a go button and they Are they all wearing executed. headphones and they hear Everybody's what you're on saying? Headphones, yeah. okay. So there's communication throughout with the sound people, the uh, carpenters, uh, the automation people, uh, props, electrics, everybody's talking together on, the, on one communication system. Mm -hmm. So that's where it starts from here. So from the queue light position uh, at that other desk, you'll see the three queue lights on this console. Uh, the red light would go on, warning him that there is a, a queue coming up. Uh, he'll hit his go button, uh, and he's watching. He's watching on the top uh, monitors up there. He's watching the unit move. He's also watching from the front, and the unit moves. So he's seeing basically the same thing we're seeing over there, except he's now got control of the piece. He's got control of the unit moving. The castle itself moves on three separate uh, automation tracks. The main castle moves on two and the west wing moves on one. So at any given time, uh, we can move the entire castle down by moving all three motors down at the same time, or we can move the big castle back and move the west wing down and separate and split the castle. Right. <laughs> uh, the, the, the west wing is unique in that uh, it also spins. Built under the west wing is a, an, another dolly that will keep the wheels up off the floor. Uh, on a given queue, we will drop the wheels down to the floor. They're cantilevered, and the, that makes the castle spin when they don't start on time or they don't, uh, they don't move exactly as they're supposed to. They glitch, whatever. Uh, a unit may start moving slower than what it's supposed to, and therefore another unit may be coming off. It's time so the units will cross each other or clear each other at, uh, precisely at the right moment. And if it's not moving together, they will crash. And voila, we're in a different area of the castle completely. I think the costumes are as important in this particular production as in as as the, the choreography or the set. Most of the shoes and boots in the show are custom made for the cast member. And this is that very famous beautiful bell ball gown. This dress weighs a lot. Try to lift it up and I'll tell you how much it weighs. Right. Go ahead, try. I've been working out. I must warn you. Okay. I if I could do this. Oh my gosh. It's heavy. It must be comparable to the heaviest wedding dress. This weighs about 35 pounds. Oh. And we always warn the girls when they first start to rehearse in the dress, be careful because the dress is going to dance for you. Now, they never believe that until they do their first turn. Sure. The dress keeps going, and pretty soon you see Belle doing one of these <laughs> things. And then underneath, there's a hoop skirt and many, many more layers of oh my slips and petticoats and way on the bottom. No wonder you it's need another a hoop.
Dilly appears to move effortlessly as she glides across the stage in this now famous ballroom scene. When we return, Roger Bethler invites us into the Beast's private dressing room for a visit with his crew of Beast Keepers. It is time for something special! Coming September 10th to the Bushnell. The Beast. Great seats are available now. For tickets, visit the Bushnell box office or call 860-987-5900. Hey, what are you waiting for? Better Bedding's having a sale. A Simmons America's Best mattress sale, that is. It's true. We carry Simmons Beautyrest mattresses with pocketed coil springs designed for an undisturbed sleep. And they're all at fantastic prices during this sale. Beautyrest queen sets are as low as $299.95. Other Simmons twin sets start at $59.95 each piece. What's more, Better Bedding has better delivery. That's free, same day, on-time delivery, seven days a week, day or night. So step on it. About 1 in 10 people will get a peptic ulcer, usually caused by an infection in the stomach lining. Symptoms include a sharp gnawing or burning pain between the belly button and the bottom of the breastbone. Most peptic ulcers can be healed with medications. Talk to your doctor. For more information, call 1-888-BLUE-TIP. These health tips are brought to you by Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Connecticut. Our plan is to keep you healthy. And Fox 61 WTIC-TV. Every day, more people are choosing Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse, and here's why. Only Lowe's carries severe weather exterior paint. With an endless selection of colors, this paint can really dress up your home. And like the name says, it'll stand up to severe weather. Rain, snow, sleet, or sun. So tough, it comes with a 15-year warranty. All at guaranteed everyday low prices, too. Maybe that's why Lowe's is behind every great paint job. When it comes to home improvement, Lowe's knows. It conquered the Amazon and the Serengeti. But now, it's truly king of the jungle. Now until September 30th, get $2,000 cash back on every 98 Nissan Pathfinder. What about your performance in this role? Is this a role that is a lot of fun for you? Um, is this the role that you get to take out your road rage on stage <laughs> at night? Well, I, I think it's great. I mean, the first act, I just get to be as mean as I want to be. I mean, I really just get to run around and roar. And first of all, one of my heroes, I have to say, is Chewbacca. If you've ever seen Star yeah. Wars, I mean, so I always, I always thought it'd be really cool to be Chewbacca, so I guess this is the closest <laughs> I've ever gotten to be to be Chewbacca. I mean, I get to put on all this hair. It's hideous, isn't it? No, I want You've come to stare at the beast, haven't you? No, I meant no harm. I get to be I a completely different person, and I just get to run around and scare everybody. I'll give you a place to stay. Well, I do know that it takes me less time to do my makeup for the newscast. <laughs> <laughs> to change Roger Beffler into the creature requires the assistance of three specialists who call themselves the Beast Keepers. Already? Okay, let's go. Makeup artist Tiffany Hicks begins by first applying prosthetic adhesive to Roger's face. It feels like Elmer's glue. To this is pressed prosthetic molds in the shape of Roger's chin. All right, here come the fangs. Nose, cheeks, and eyebrows. Mm. Not too pearly white. Then you look when you came in. <laughs> That's quite lovely. Here's the nose. Mm. You can see. Nice breathing hole, so it doesn't affect breathing or singing. So the reason they do put these on is because hair, these are the portions where the hair goes directly on. So instead of stick, trying to stick hair to my skin, mm. the hair pieces all go over these. It really saves the skin. Right, it helps me a lot. But you'll see by the time she finishes with her makeup, these won't look like pieces anymore. In fact, this jaw, which now looks like totally out of place, will suddenly look like my mouth. Just the face part takes... Half an hour. Yeah, less than half an hour. How long does it take to take it off? Probably not. Two seconds. Half, yeah. <laughs> About a minute or two. <laughs> and what shade do we have today? 
This is just a, your general bronze tone. It's not mauve. No, mauve is red. Not like sun-kissed sienna. Yeah. <laughs> Using several types, colors, and shades of makeup, yeah. Tiffany masterfully replaces I mean, Roger's face with that of the hideous beast. This part's always a little... Yeah, I'm standing back. Mm. What is that, like water? For some reason. What is that? I shed it. It feels nice and cool. Gin. I just... It's gin. Mm. No. Mm, now I'm ready to go. <laughs> Actually, now we can do my favorite look, which is this. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, how's it going? the regular hair. <laughs> yeah. Mick Jagger. Oh, <laughs> it's just amazing. <laughs> Open your mouth. Uh, this tedious business doesn't seem to bother Roger at all. Actually, it's kind of a nice mellow of time to just kind of kick back. I mean, you're just sitting there. Everybody's coming oh, around you uh, helping you out. And uh, it's really pretty relaxing, actually. Now hair specialist Mark Adam Rampmeyer's turn. Mark glues various hair pieces to Roger's previously applied prosthetic molds. A combination of human and specially developed synthetic hair is used to create a truly believable man-beast. Abe Lincoln. There's ZZ Top right there. The Dukakis eyebrows. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He like, keeps pushing me back. I'm like, Gentle Ben. You're feeling handsome now. Yeah. With these pieces securely in place, the final phase of the transformation can begin. Beast keeper Jean Lowes helps Roger dress into horns, torso, hands, and feet. Until finally, more than an hour and a half after it began, the awesome transformation is complete. Modern day beast. Are you frightened of me now? Mm. So there it is, complete beast. There's a lot of rewarding parts about this part. I love the message for the kids. I love the whole reading message for one thing. That's one of my favorite scenes is the library scene with Belle, where she teaches him what reading is and how it can take you to another world, which end. is something I've, I've always found through reading myself. What a beautiful story. My favorite scene, honestly, is when I waltz with him. The quintessentially romantic moment in the show for me to hear Barbara Marino, who plays Mrs. Potts, sing that she song. She has a beautiful voice. So I, effortlessly. We can just sit there and listen to her and Fall have a up. moment. Yeah. It's absolutely it's, it's, it's easy to do so every nice. single night. being a part of Fox 61's look behind the magic of Disney's Beauty and the Beast. Your chance to see this dazzling stage spectacular here at the Bushnell runs through October 11th. And believe me, if you've enjoyed what you've seen tonight, wait until you see it live on stage. For all of us at Fox 61, I'm Susan Christensen. Good night.